Hey guys, welcome back to another second order ODE. So here we'll be checking out how to find the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions within a Sturm-Louisville equation. Well, what do we know about Sturm-Louisville equation? So firstly, they always take this form. In other words, um, you have the second derivative of a function in front plus the first order the derivative, which has a derivative of this function. So in other words, this can be rewritten. And of course, the most important thing is, is the lambda. The lambda is actually the eigenvalue. This is just a weighted function, and qx is another function. But in most cases, especially with this part, I'm going to show a really simple function, simple equation and how to calculate the respective eigenvalues and check whether or not they exist. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so I'm going to just take this out and clean out. All right, and we're back. So here's a simple example. So the one I've taken is the second derivative of um, y respect to x plus lambda y equals zero. And the objective here is to check whether or not for lambda equals zero and lambda not equals zero, if any eigenvalues actually exist in this equation. Well, and of course, this is all subject to the boundary, val boundary value points at y zero minus y prime zero equals zero. In other words, zeros here represent when x equals zero. So remember, y here is a function of x. And of course, another equation, y prime 1 equals 0. So without further ado, let's start popping everything in. So let's take the lambda equals 0 case for starters, okay? So what actually happens? Subtraction uh, lambda equals 0, you should get y prime prime. This is 0, so this vanishes and you're left with this, 0. Now, all we really got to do is integrate this twice, guys, okay? So let's get integrating skills out. So integrating this equation, once you should get y prime equals a constant because the integral of zero is nothing so you're left with plus c integrating this equation so well remember c is a constant so integrating this will give us c x plus another constant d not bad now all you want to do here is pop this into both bvp so apply them both so this tells us when y at when um, x equals zero well, let's 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 do this first. We need to satisfy this condition. So at the point y equals x equals zero for the y equation, we're left with y equals d. So here we get d. For the the, the first derivative equation at x equals zero, well, because there's no x, you left with c as it is. So our first equation is d minus c equals zero. Now for this one, same thing. For the first derivative, when x is one, again, there's nothing, so we should get c, and this is also equal to zero. Now the purpose of this one is to, of course, check if if this can do if this condition has any eigenvalues. And to do that, well, we need to use some matrices for eigenvalues. First, I would restructure this into a, a suborder, so I would like to put in alphabetical order. So let's call this minus c plus d. Okay, minus c plus d equals zero. And the zeros here would indicate our zero vectors. Okay, so of course there's no d, so this is what we're looking at. In the vector format, with C, D here, equals the zero vectors, we can place this in. So to obtain this expression, we, need to, we can say that this row times this column equals zero. This is for zero. So minus one times C will give us minus C. To get plus D, we need one times D would give us zero. Same, so this C has a coefficient of one, so one C times 1 times c give us c, plus, there's nothing here, we need a 0. So 0 times d gives us nothing. And of course, this all equals 0. Now, the final step for this section is to, of course, take the determinant. Because when you set the determinant, the whole purpose is to prove whether or not this is 0. And if it's 0, then yes, eigenvalues exist. If not, then, well, <laughs> too bad, then it doesn't exist. So let's take the determinant of this one. So... Let me make some space. Okay, so here, now taking the, the determinant of this one, so the DET, we should get, so more plan diagonally and subtracting other diagonal, minus one times zero is zero, minus one times one is one. And of course, this doesn't equal zero. So hence, for lambda equals zero, this is not an eigenvalue. In other words, they do not 
exist. Okay, so we satisfied, we proved one condition. Now, suppose we took the second case, which is lambda doesn't equal zero. So once again, we're really clearing, clearing out this board. Okay, so choosing again, when lambda doesn't equal zero, what happens? Well, we just need to solve the second order OD and recall that lambda is, is just a constant, so it's just a nice number. So using the linear second order OD, we can let this equation be reformulated as a nice beautiful quadratic. So let's just say the second order would equal m squared. So m squared would be, for example, uh, x squared plus lambda equals zero. So a simple quadratic. Solving this, m squared equals minus lambda. Square root in this term, we should get m equals plus minus root lambda i. So recall that when you square root, a negative term you get a complex i of course you also get plus minus solution and this in turn has a nice neat solution where y equals the complex solution which is a sine root lambda x plus b cos root lambda x so this is a very standard second order complex root solution now of course we should take the first derivative in order to sort to you know apply the bvp so taking the first derivative, what do we have? Typical sine rules, when you differentiate inside, the term comes outside, so we're gonna have a root lambda, and of course it switches out to cos with the same terms inside. Next, differentiate cos, you get minus sine, and differentiate here, it goes outside, so you get minus b sine, oops, you get minus root lambda, b root lambda sine, root lambda x okay not bad now it's just a case of applying the bvp so let's do the first one so using the first equation this part when for the y equation when x equals zero what do we get so when this is zero we should know that sine zero is zero when this is zero we should know that cos zero is actually one so we're left with just zero plus b times one which is b okay good now, next part is minus, so y prime zero. So, again, when cos zero here, we get one. When sine zero, we get zero. So this is this this vanishes. We're left with just a root lambda, and of course, this equals zero. So that's our first equation. Our second equation now is when we take the second, the, the first derivative equation, and put one in and set to zero. So putting one in, what do we get? So replacing this a one and one, we get the whole expression a root lambda cos root lambda minus b root lambda sine root lambda and just like the previous example of lambda equals zero we need to put this in vector format well the eigenvalue matrix format in order to calculate whether or not there are eigenvalues or not so let me just clean this up and then we're going to get straight to that okay so this is what we should have in return now let's put this into vector into matrix format so once again, open this up, and of course we can take the determinant once we're done. Let's put these terms here, so we're going to have, of course, A, B here, which is going to equal the zero vectors, which are these two. So the first term, with the A term, will be root lambda, cos root lambda, so this times A gives this term, minus B, uh, yeah, so minus, for the B term, it would be minus root lambda sine root lambda which will give us times b will give us this term here again so for minus a root lambda what do we get so to get this term it would just be minus root lambda and to get b it would just be one all right not bad now just taking the determinant and of course setting it to zero because we need to prove it determine this term will just be root lambda cos this times this will give us root lambda cos root lambda times one is that minus these two multiplied will give us, so this root lambda times root lambda will be positive, negatives cancel, so we get uh, root lambda itself times sine root lambda equals zero. And now, this equation pretty much guarantees that eigenvalues will exist. The cool thing about this equation, we can rewrite in, in a beautiful way. I mean, usually, this, as long as lambda values exist, then you can have infinite number of eigenvalues, so that's pretty much the main idea. It's a test, if it equals zero, Thankfully, there's no constant, so we can set any values as long as it becomes zero. 
So let me just, um, let's, let's try and rewrite this in a more beautiful way in terms of time. So we can call this a tra transcend. Okay, so back again. So all, all I really did is um, rewrite the equations up here. So the main idea is to make tan root lambda subject. So let's do that. Our plus is across and then the right cos. So let's just do it anyway. So copy the left hand side. I would plus lambda sine root lambda across, which will give us this. Dividing cos across, cos root lambda will give us root lambda. And dividing lambda, I'll put it here. Sine over cos will give us tan root lambda. Of course, simplifying this term, cos lambda can be written as root lambda times root lambda. We just knock out one each. So ultimately, we're left with tan root lambda equals one over root lambda. And this, my friends, is called a transcendental equation, where the main term, the main variable, is, is on both sides of the equation. Okay, so, great. Now, what do we do this? Well, really, not much, because the whole purpose of this is to set this equation, and um, for certain values of lambda, in this case, I should say that lambda should be equal or greater than zero. We put values and see if we get any um, curves. You mainly have to sketch this, but this is really it. You solve this using a um, computer system or test certain values. Most likely, see if zero works, it won't because it's one over zero. But some will give you solutions. So good. So now the next step is to look at eigenfunctions, okay? So let me just clear this out. We're going to move straight to eigenfunctions now. And here we are, guys, eigenfunctions. So before we start, let's consider one of our BVP solution, okay? So the whole purpose of eigenfunction is so um, to provide multiple scalar solutions to eigenvalues itself. So the reason why I'm showing you this, guys, is that we want to rewrite this equation y, basically in terms of one variable, let's just say a. Okay, so once there's a scale of a, this implies that these two equations are equal and we're going to have infinite eigenfunctions or infinite solutions to the eigenfunction. Okay, so without further ado, let's kick in. So pop make so so pretty much solving this one, which is we could say that b equals a root lambda. Now substituting a root lambda into this equation, what do we have? We now have y equals a sine root lambda x plus a root lambda times cos root lambda x. Factorizing a l and voila we have our appropriate eigenfunction. Oops. Root lambda cos root lambda x. And here, this is y. So sin a to say one, hence our eigenfunction is simply sine root lambda x. And notice I put, instead of lambda, I'm put an n, indicating we can have numerous solutions, okay? Depending on your values. So, writing this out, plus root lambda cos root lambda x. And that's it, guys, is your eigenfunction, and I um, hope this helps. Again, you can also present an eigenfunction for the original term. And you do the same effort. Substitute this equation back in, make, you use your simple variable put into the y equation, and voila. You'll get one for when lambda equals zero, which is this part. Okay? So guys, um, if you have any questions, let me know, and um, I sh or otherwise I shall see you soon. Ciao, ciao.